Uh, hey, it's Rob with Rob Bob Grader. We're playing a very special game of uh, Base Raiders that is actually going to be using another game system. So, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. So, that, that, so one night ah. at the brass door, uh, Warbot uh, 555 comes and says, Hey guys, my latest uh, go kickstart my Indiegogo campaign, crowdfunding campaign. I think you made in. that up. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's this great movie uh, directed by three cinematic auteurs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the, this guy named Neil Breen, Tommy Wiseau, and Jane, and then the third guy is James Nguyen. They all are great writers, directors. They've all co-written, directed, and starred in a movie. Um, and we're gonna watch it. And, Warbot? Yeah. Um, I, I have a question. It is... I'm locking the doors now. Alright. Well, no, no, no. no. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I, I can still produce plasma burst to get out. Well, that'll uh, trigger the uh, self-destruct mechanism. It will be have, worth it. Do you have beer and snacks? We do. <laughs> not good. Let's do it's it. Did you, like, kill all human circuit, get rewired, but also hook to the most... I have to supplement that urge now. in certain ways, all right, Jeff? To cause us to uh, to take our own lives? Well, maybe. So That's uh, the coward's way out. Uh, yeah, so some of the members of the brass door uh, have uh, gathered around for movie night. And uh, we're going to be. Well, what is this movie? We haven't even decided what it's called. What, so for this, why is there suddenly a blinking sign on your chest that says movie? <laughs> uh, I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, I don't have uh, subliminal programming that's making me do things. Um, do you have a toaster in your head? Maybe. So uh, let's see. First off, yeah, we're going to be using uh, an. an uh, a vintage role-playing game. Now came that from... that flimsy premise is done with. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. There will be a house rule. Uh, if you, as your character in the Base Raiders campaign, can come with a good one-liner to describe what's going on in the game, i.e. a riff uh, or something like that, uh, you will get uh, five 1d10 fame points, uh, which is an attribute in the game. Um, so it came from the late, late, late show. It's three lates. Uh, role-playing in the bad movies. I don't know why it's called bad. I mean, uh, the, the Neil Breen Those time so and James Nguyen have yes um, uh, all I hear is retching in the background I don't understand why <laughs> uh, I thought you were powered by nanites you need to get your body so um, so we have three players tonight uh, Bill will be playing <clears throat> Tommy Wiseau yes uh, Tom will be playing Jesus I mean Neil Breen <laughs> Neil Breen uh, that's only half of his movies he's Jesus the other times he's a Tom Clancy character uh, and then Aaron we showed up last, got a very angry person. <laughs> James Nguyen. <laughs> Director Bird, of Birdemic and, and Replica Jill. and Jack and Jill. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll do character creation live because also while you're rolling up your stats and everything and figuring out what your abilities are, um, you, we don't even have a title for the movie yet. So the premise of this is that they all put all their names together to raise more money on the indie Kickstarter Go Go GoFundMe CrowdFundMe Gimme Money dot com campaign. Uh, or tell me why so... Can you know, we, can we so just, they all have 33% control over the movie. The thing is, can we just have a new Kickstarter... Oh, sorry, a new crowdfunding source basically just called Pile of Shit? Add to this pile of shit! Uh, wow. Excuse me, we make art? Yeah, exactly. Oh. See, Tom's in character. <laughs> there, have been not, art, no. there have been art displays that are nothing but piles of shit. Literally! It's on this new, very meta crowdfunding platform called Seriously, It's Not a Scam. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, in fact, Bill, you give your yourself plus one d10 fame yeah um, as they put that seriously i am three more famous yes um so you have five uh first four Laundry, base attributes. what are you talking about build dexterity brains and looks uh and you get 40 10 in each um build what dexterity yes. brains and looks and then there is an attribute called fame and we'll do that a little bit uh but the first three first four attributes you get 40 10 on each uh, but while you're rolling those, you can think of it. Each of you get one third of the title, uh, or you can all collaborate, or you know, uh, give your share of the title to another person. So it's only one name. So what is the title? What is one third of the title uh, going to be? So you guys think about that while you're rolling numbers. <sighs> and the thing is, um, it's a third in terms of. Well, we we haven't decided how what a third of a title how long that would be. Is that a word? Is it three words? Is it ten Sentence. words? Is it a hundred characters? Is it a tweet? Um, so you can think about that. 
So yeah, uh, it, it. So are we ro- we're rolling the four d ten to? Yeah, we roll four d ten for each attribute. And then, are we or adding? I mean, you just give yourself a four d each one because you're a great director. I mean, I don't know. It's I I, I trust your artistic judgment in this. Um, so I go randomly because there that's you go. how the director yeah. goes. Are we are we adding them up? Yes. Okay. Uh, this uses a percentile system, and a lot of times you'll be rolling your attribute plus a talent. <coughs> Oh shit! What did you get? A forty? No. I believe I would believe that. I uh, close. Oh yeah. Uh, fourteen, twenty-one, thirty. Thirty brains. Yeah. <clears throat> Not thirty brains. What's <laughs> <laughs> up? What? But Neil Breen, obviously, look at all those laptops that Neil Breen would have. That's uh, true. That that's an indication indication of intelligence. Oh, okay, now that one. Was it a 40? 37 in Oh, books. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Neil Breen. That's oh. why he has to show his ass all the time. I only got a 32. That's why I only <laughs> show my ass once. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that very, very shapely ass of yours. Oh, oh yeah. It's toned. <laughs> like something. It's unnaturally toned. <laughs> all right, 24 decks, so that's right. that one a little quickish. Yeah. I mean, you can see that in the in the the, the stunt work of uh, uh, Birdemic and Rubber the, yeah. the riveting uh, fighting <laughs> birds with wire hanger scenes. I mean, you can see James Nguyen's hand in that. I mean, oh sure, he's holding a camera. That's that's clearly requires a lot of dexterity. It does. It does. All all the dexterity. <laughs> uh. All right. So, have you thought of? Yeah, if you're done rolling your attributes, you can think about what's your third of the title. Because we need a title for the movie. It could be long. I mean, we, we I, yeah, I haven't, dis- it's just whatever length it is. Infinite Light. Infinite Light, okay. <clears throat> um, I don't really care, but it needs to start with the and refer to some sort of architectural term, like a room or a house <laughs> or apartment. Veranda? Veranda. The okay. Veranda of Infinite Light. Okay, so we have the Veranda of Infinite Light. Uh, well, see, it, and I think uh, now we need now we need like a uh, but it, semicolon. But you have you have the carb Ooh. sense of it, but you don't really have the names. We can't care about them unless we know about the person. So this is Marcy's veranda of infinite light. The Marcy's. The Marcy. The Marcy's. The Marcy's. The Marcy's. The Marcy's. The Marcy's. Yes. Veranda I, of infinite light. This this will be best title of movie. Okay. Like, oh. You know the Marcy's. You all, you all need to know that I was like my intense artistic vision has created this cinematic endeavor that we are about to partake of. Onward, the Marcy's gotcha. veranda of, yes. <laughs> of infinite. <clears throat> I like that. You know, he's actually cra- Neil Brain in real life is actually crowdfunding uh, a campaign for a new movie called Twisted. It's going to be a dark psychological thriller. Where he's... I don't need to know these things. You do need Sorry, to know. I don't. Reason. I am but you know it. You know, you know it now, and you can't unknow it. I can. <laughs> you can try. You can drink, okay. to, drink to forget. Exactly. All right. Early onset Alzheimer's. All right, so once you get out of those four done, um, <coughs> let's see here. Your survival points... Well, actually, first off, you have your fame. Mm-hmm. Your fame is 1d10 per role the actor plays. So uh, think of every movie you've been in. Uh, and roll 1d10 for that, or what movie you've directed. So, uh. So we double that for those, or? Uh, no, no, for it's just 1d10 per movie you have made. Mm-hmm. Maybe so I mean, made three, right? Three. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, two? Two, yeah. Because the house that drips blood on Alex never happened, right? Never uh, materialized. Um, I think it's, I've seen it. But what about I've Neighbors, though? Yeah, with neighbors the series count? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I also have three. All right. Nice son. <laughs> That's what happens when you get right up on the interblogs. <laughs> he is. He is very. Okay. All right. 15 fame. 26. 28. Notwithstanding. Now, your survival points added. are equal to your. by adding your build and your fame together. Um, build is obviously your, your actorly build, uh, your physical stuff, um, and. 
Let's see here. You said build to brain? Uh, add build and fame. Add build and fame, sorry. Okay. The more famous you are, the more resilient you are. Obviously. <laughs> this is actually the rules of the game. Um, so, let's see here. Uh, props. You do, 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 do. you get a number of props equal to your fame divided by ten. So, in every scene, you can have uh, that many props. Um, but those are the only items you can have. Is that base fame or current fame? Current fame. Excellent. So, I just... <laughs> Knocked my way over into another football per scene. <laughs> All right. So the one thing uh, we're gonna I'm gonna house rule is that normally you get twenty one d ten rolls for your talents, which are basically your skills. What? Yes, because uh, this is how what? they do it back in the eighties. Uh, but we're not gonna. I'm not gonna give you the list of talents. You can just make them up and then uh, assign them whenever you need to make a roll. Um, and it's a percentile based system. So basically, most of the time you're gonna be rolling. Attribute plus talent. So uh, anytime you want to, just keep a track of how many rolls you started with, 20. And then whenever you need to, like, say, hit a throw football, have the throw football talent and spend, I don't know, 40 10 to make yourself really good at throwing footballs. Or interrupt drug bust. Interrupt drug bust, yeah. Very specific but very powerful talent. So. Park car. Park yeah. car. <laughs> Long awkward date. Oh, oh my god. Yes. <laughs> that's a great one. That's a, that's I'm actually legitimately oh, for that. Actually clean, promote clean energy. Yeah. Pack laptops. Set or destroy them. hundred of uh, by the way, whenever you roll your skill, hundred is always a failure. Uh, um, but yeah, so sex scene that doesn't actually involve sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, those twenty dice are gonna go up quickly. Um <laughs> So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, uh, the next thing is a couple. There are a couple of rules. Um, there, there are rules. There are thing. actually rules, believe it or not. Uh, that, that we're going to be uh, anytime you have fight. Fighting is obviously you know um, highest dexterity goes first, and then you know roll to attack, and then there's weapon damages. It's very basic, very kind of eclipse phasey, but. Um, at the end of every combat take, you can refresh 1d10 survival points as they refresh, refresh makeup on your character. Um, so... <laughs> this is a hell of a pedal somebody gave us. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm, I'm betting it was Noah. <laughs> uh, this, the, I bought this myself, actually. Oh, okay. I found oh out so it. it's all Ross. It's all me. Blame uh, him. <laughs> Uh, let's see, a cover, it doesn't matter what it is, it gives you entirely, uh, uh, uh proof of against whatever. Um, let's see, commercial breaks. Uh, you can call for a, a commercial break, uh, by making a, once everyone can call for one commercial break during the session, and that means, um, let's see here, to, 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 actors can pause the game, think about what they're gonna do, um, or... Uh, yeah, uh, try and negotiate something better. Uh, another thing you can try to walk off the set, uh, which is rolling against your current fame. Uh, and if you succeed, then you walk off the set, uh, to negotiate something different, and then that happen that changes. Uh, but we'll sort of relax that. So whenever you want to walk off the set, you can roll your fame, and if you succeed, you dictate how the story gets changed. Like, if you're about to get killed, you could walk off the set and succeed, and then suddenly your character's fine. Uh, or perhaps they become a demigod with techno cybernetic powers. That would be uh, the road agency. I would take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. You can also make a fame check to... Or actually, I'll just say uh, you can spend 10 fame to have a stunt double uh, do something for you. Uh, <laughs> Kill an extra. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Um, a film break is the last report and once the actor. So... Um, the action of the film of the movie stops, and then so basically you burn one d ten fame points, and then uh, basically we have a continuity break. So uh, I'll roll a d ten, and then you can say this scene ends and picks up immediately somewhere else. So I imagine we'll be doing a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, so you can get fame by uh, having good riffs. Uh, or pointing out flaws in the movie of other people, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, I imagine you guys will be spending that. Uh, Flaw. This movie exists. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we haven't even established that. Um, so, yeah, but you guys are all also co-directors, co-writers, and co-stars. So, 
Uh, we haven't established. I do. There is a. There is a plot, but you haven't discovered it yet. So, uh, how does the movie begin? Uh, we'll just go. Actually, since James Nguyen looks the most enthused about this, um, what is the opening scene, Mister Nguyen? The uh, end. <laughs> okay. This is a memento. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yeah, I like that cinematic structure. All right. So, what does the end look like? Oh. Damn it. Yeah, so yeah, what, what, yeah. What is the, what do we see first? I was trying to escape. Uh, <laughs> can't escape. Actually, literally, it is a what appears at, at just an open sea that as you start rewinding the film back turns into wire frames of two people running down a beach that are and further wireframes of different, you know, I, I think realistic birds are over one, overwrought. Everything needs to be CGI'd in this as it was before. So it's, uh, we can't really tell if it's a memory of somebody or if it's a computer system that's completely going down, but it's, it's wireframes going back into really cheaply made 3D models and then green screened actors. Okay. So, uh, so they're running along the beach. Uh, they're running backwards. Cause they're running is, backwards. Okay. It's, it's all reversed. All right. Uh, so that's happening. You're, you're there. James Nguyen, you, mm-hmm. you were there because you're a co-star in this oh, okay. movie, uh, as well as a co-writer and co-director. Uh, so you're running backwards, and you're all running backwards from uh, a giant crab. Uh, and the problem is that it can walk. You can't tell if it's walking backwards or forwards. I, I have a voiceover, crab. too. Uh, you do? Yes, okay. It's, it, it is saying, like, it didn't have to end this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get one D10 pick. Um, no, I'm yay. All right, so James Nguyen is being menaced by a giant crab walking backwards. <laughs> Everyone is walking backwards right now. That's a special effect. Uh, there are rules for that. I'm not going to look this up, though. Uh, but anyways, uh, Neil Breen is currently voiceovering. Is he seen in the uh, scene right now? Is he visible on camera? Or no, is he? Oh, not Okay, not yet. All right. <clears throat> Uh, is Tommy Wiseau on camera yet? Uh, yes, actually. Okay. He's going to pop up. Um, so I'm holding a bouquet of flowers, prop one, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> as, you know, cover. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pop out and uh, hit the giant crab with a spoon. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Okay. Prop. Yeah. In its weak point for massive damage. Okay. Uh, normally, let's see here. Let's see if they have a damage rating for spoons. Uh, there are there are weapon rating. They do have uh, what do you call it? Um, I'll go ahead and say gigantic spoon. Gigantic spoon. <laughs> My spoon. Let's see, yeah, they have pencils on there. Um, they have wooden sticks, tire iron, base. Uh, let's see here. Oh, but not gigantic spoon. No, not gigantic. But my verisimilitude. I know. Uh, this is an old. Yeah, they 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 didn't update it for that. So uh, we'll say it does as much damage as a a base, uh, which does five plus. Sounds legitimate. Yeah, five plus. Uh, one's your hand hand bonus. Uh, probably. I don't know what hand-to-hand bonus is, so I'm not going to look that up. Uh, I'll just say plus 10. So it does 15 damage per, so uh, you can go ahead and roll, probably build, plus whatever, what what talent are you using to uh, attack it with a giant spoon? Well, obviously, I was hidden behind the flowers, oh. so I'm attacking from surprise. Oh, okay. So the talent is called Ohai. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many points do you have in Ohai? How many um, D- D10 rolls are you... Uh, 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 yeah, that is my sneaking and surprising skill. Okay. Um, let's see, we have 20 points. I like that name of the town, get 1d10 paid. <laughs> Eight. To 39. As Jeff says, oh hi, as he pops out from yeah. the bouquet to attack mm-hmm. the giant crab. Um, I will, I feel like that's fairly important. I'm going to put three points in oh hi. Okay, well, 3d10 rolls. 3d10. Yes. Oh, okay. Sure. So you have 20 1d10 right, right. rolls. It's very important um, we get the rolls right. So that's... I have 14 points in Ohio. All right, so you have 14 points plus your build. That's your percentage ability to hit it with the giant spook. Okay. That's a total of 40. Okay. Uh, 65. Nope. All right. Uh, he, so Tommy was uh, flails desperately against the giant crab. Uh, as it stops, it cannot choose whether it will... Actually, it reaches down. It has two giant pinchers. One is heading towards James Nguyen and the other one to Tommy Wiseau. Uh, what is James Nguyen going to do before he gets crushed? Uh, he, James Nguyen is very, that's like, scared until he seemingly is distracted by a uh, familiar-looking woman who just keeps jogging in place back and forth between 
<laughs> uh, it's like the Bay Area, which we which we need to just already establish. This is where it's taking place. Okay. Uh, and oh, yeah. As he follows it, the crab it's at, the crab's arm is actually going to go into uh, be just, uh, pinced between several different rows in the car because uh, James is going to pr- set up the props for at least four different cars, blocking it. Okay. And uh, utilizing his talent. What's your fame? Uh, my fame's at fifteen. Fifteen. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you can only have one prop then. Oh, one prop. Fame, okay. Yeah. So it's this one car. Uh, uh, okay. There's, there's one little hatchback, but it's enough to block in the talent he's using. Park it. <laughs> so, okay. Park it. How many uh, D ten rolls did you uh, put into that? Uh, I will put four into that. Right. So. And I'd say that's more of a dex. Yeah. All right, so you can so, take shelter in your parked car yeah. as he's uh, cr- as he's parking it and talking to the woman who and distracting himself from the fact that there's a giant crab there, even though you're not really sure he, he knows who she is. Okay. So, all right, park it. Four. Okay. All right, so the base of that's going to be twelve, fifteen, uh, fourteen, twenty-four. 24, so that yeah. makes it? Yeah. All right. So the giant crab claw uh, reaches for James Nguyen, but the car, but the parked car stops yeah. it. Uh, but uh, the, the car itself starts shaking, as though someone outside the camera ranks was shaking the car. Uh, and the unknown woman says, Oh, no, the car is about to blow up. We need to get out. Or it's going to be too late, James Nguyen. Um, so things are getting more intense. Uh, but for... Yes, is oh, Neil Breen going to show us? Oh, what is Neil Breen going to be doing? Like, I'm sitting... I, like Neil Breen is currently up, uh, like up on a hill overlooking the battle scene. Okay. Like he, oh, giant he, crab. he has like a metal black metal briefcase. In front What's your of fame? Uh, thirty-five right now. Thirty-five. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Like around his neck is a uh, is like a, is a medallion that has a picture of a woman and him <laughs> hugging. Okay. So and, that's two. And, and, but like that's he's two speaking, but He's not speaking, but he still has the voiceover going. Okay. It says, "I knew what had to be done." <laughs> Like, it says, it's the culmination of every decision that has led up to this point. As I, as I open up the case, and it's, <laughs> and it has, and it has, a, I mean, it actually has like there's a key, you know, stuck, you know, stuck into a d- device. And it says, like, the only question, I, the only question I could ask myself, like, do I have the courage to do what needs to be done? As I take off the, the pendant, look at it, and then fold it so it forms another key. <laughs> okay. And I, it says, like, do like, 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 dare I unleash the powers that the powers contained therein to destroy this and perhaps the world? Like, this we can only see. And I turn both of them. <laughs> All right, what talent are you using to activate this machine? Techno Deus Ex. Techno Deus Ex. <laughs> and how many D10 rolls are you uh, putting into that? I think five. All right, roll five D10. Well, then obviously this is brains uh, that you'll okay. be adding to it. So yeah, so your base percentage in your talent is 5d10. And then your percentage roll for this thing will be brains plus that. Alright, ooh. 10, 15, 20, 30. Uh, 30. 31. Yeah. 35. Alright. And what's your brains? Uh, 30. So 65. So you have 65% chance of activating the machine. No! Okay. Anyone. Uh, so the skeleton did not deem it was time. Uh, yes, there's literally a skeleton. <laughs> it looks like an animated gif of a skeleton. And I, and I stop and I just, I just stare at it longingly. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just there. It's just a skeleton. It looks like a medical uh, skeleton that's been propped up against a rock. But it's looking at you. It kind of uh, well, so, something no, no, that's I, totally I, I, not a string is pulling it to look towards. And you. actually, I look at it. <laughs> I reached my hand out toward it. <laughs> God, it's been hard times for the lost skeleton of Cadaver. Uh, all right, so the other giant pinch, enemy, giant enemy crab claw uh, pincher is reaching towards Tommy Wiseau. How is he going to respond? Um. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to throw a football at it. All right, well, I'm yep. going to engage it in a game of catch. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. If you succeed, what what skill is this? Or talent, sorry. It's football. <laughs> well, I wanted to know what name you were calling it, you know. All right. So. <laughs> How many D10s are you adding, equi- uh, adding to this? Um, and this is obviously dexterity. Yeah. Oh, wait, for, right. since I was always played in the uh, uh, tailored football. Yeah, it's yeah, a little sorry. specific. Sorry. I'll go 4D10. <laughs> Um, 
do do do. <coughs> so 26, 28 on that, and so that plus dex is 54. All right. 88. That's a nope. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, uh, you throw the football. Uh, it catches it with its pitcher, and then it bisects the football. Uh, as we have a brief flashback of it being taunted by the other crabs uh, for not being good at football. Uh, so, uh, as the taunting crab voice, you're not good at football, it, its eyes turn red, uh, and poor Tommy Wiseau takes 200 damage, uh, from that. So, what? yes, uh, it does no! 200 damage. Giant crab. Uh, unless there was a stunt double. Try to get me to burn off that fame, huh? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> or you'd be dead and then just be a ghost for the rest of the adventure. I don't care. <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> I think I will be. <laughs> All right. So tell me, so uh, how, what happens? How to, uh, please describe the dramatic death of like, by a giant crab. I'm really surprised you have to ask. <laughs> yeah. Because it's obvious what the crab's going to do. Yeah. It's going to tear me apart. <laughs> Yeah, give yourself another D10 effect. <laughs> Dude, you worked in Saw, saw Pa. You, you have so much fun. Wait, uh, wait. Right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There are other lines, of course. Uh, all right, so Tommy was so is being, has been torn apart. Yes. Uh, it's very... Oh, both of you... Oh, wait, there are terror rules, so... No. Uh, you might be so... I over- feel like you should not inflict those, because if you did, we all should have run screaming from the movie when it started. Yeah. Uh, no, not for, the, not for these particular... Honestly, ones. I think we should have run screaming at the first table reading. Uh, let's see here. Uh... Let's see here. Oh yeah, roll. Uh, Tommy, what's I mean, sorry, not Tommy. Uh, Neil Breen and James Nguyen, please roll your fame. Fame. Remember, remember. Seven. I make it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some doubt. Uh, I do not. All right. So let's see what happens. To hey Ross, I'm just busy, I'm busy looking at the skeleton. Oh yeah, no, he he doesn't even notice. We're just rolling underneath with that number, right? Uh yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh. Uh, you, let's see here, uh, gibber with fear, uh, and back away for 1d10 frames, so, uh, so you start gibbering, ah! uh, but yeah, what are you gonna do as you're gibbering? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, so, but for the bat teeth, uh, for the frame skip, do I, is that, uh, is that an action that I can't do? Or? Uh, that's, but you, no, you can, you can still do things as long as you're backing away. Okay. As long as it's something for someone who's being scared by a giant crab. Uh, yes, actually, I'm doing that at this point, however... Don't forget, you, uh, we also do have the rules of, uh, uh, walking off the set, threatening to walk off the set, and, uh, let's see here, call for a movie break, to, or a film break, uh, to where you can just pick up a, as the scene, as we lose some continuity or something like that. So, yeah. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, I, I, yeah, James Union is very much in us, like, in mortal fear of this. Uh, but he ends up backing right into, that's like a family that's, uh, that's a, fa- a family of four that seems to be fleeing in the opposite direction. Okay. From them, and with that, he actually, uh, he's going to look the, oh, uh, what was it, utilizing? Oh, shit, Fred. Uh, he's going to actually realize that this is he actually knows these people these are people that he hung out with in a bar or hanging out with his family (laughs) (laughs) alright so he's going to get them as protection okay god I hate Uh, that song fucking song so much if you sing one if you sing the if you sing the hook I'll give you uh, 2d10 fame I don't remember (laughs) I hang out Hang out with family. <laughs> Come on, put some more spirit into <laughs> Dude, it. I hate that song. I know. Hanging out, hanging out with the family. Hanging yeah. out, hanging out with the family. See, like that. <laughs> yeah, like that, man. Uh. <laughs> I'm not drunk enough for this. I'm not hey, drunk at all. All right, I, I got it. Tom's out, never drunk. Hanging out with the family. Go. All right, hanging out, hanging out with the family. All right, we're done. Two D ten fake. Thank you. <laughs> Feel sick. Feel used. I just did it. I did nothing. Yeah, you did. Just, it for just, I did that for inspiration. For the song. All oh, right. So I get ten fame. All right, you got ten fame for that. Uh, you're running away. Uh, you escape. You leave your car, your parked car behind, and the woman behind. Uh, the giant crab um, is still menacing. 
Uh, the people, obviously, Mr. Brain. Uh, so what, what is Neil Brain going to do next? The weapon was a failure. But I had other means at my disposal. For I, it's a, for I, there is no technological event in this country that I am not directly privy to. As I produce a laptop from just a place, it doesn't okay. matter where. Yeah. Hammer space. Yes. 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 I, happen to, I happen to know that crabs like this respond to certain frequencies along the international internet radio database <laughs> system. As I, like, as, like, and I happen to know that there, there is a frequency that will drive it mad and perhaps kill it. But I only had a limited time. Unfortunately, you are immediately cut to stock footage of uh, people in a plane looking at a radar screen. Uh, so that will go on before you can make a skill roll. Um, so but Tommy, I keep talking about it. Oh, yeah, you keep talking about it. But we're, we're watching stock footage. <laughs> we, don't, we don't care anymore. Tell me what's up. What's happening next? Oh, shit. <laughs> I got nothing. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Neo, he's still dead. Uh, so James Newen, uh, you're still running no, no, away. The crab is like eating the pieces of yeah. it now. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go, yeah. Uh, so we're alternating the stock footage with uh, Tommy Wiseau being eaten by a giant crab on a beach. As people are screaming in terror, uh, they were just having a nice time hanging out with their family. Uh, and now it's this, uh, uh, what's, what's happening next? Uh, let's see, as Jim Newen is, can, is running away from the family, uh, he starts seeing at least line glitches with the other families as he's realizing that something is not quite up with it. Yeah. And as it happens, he hears a voice which sounds very much like the woman he was talking to on... Okay. Uh, it's like next to his car saying, the simulation's been corrupted. Oh my god, who put, who put that crab in there? Okay. okay. There were two crabs. They work in pairs. I guess that means I'm a ghost in the machine. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, mm. All right, fine. Get your detail there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was even begging for it. I was just what like, are you rolling? I was flicking for it. Oh, so for that. You uh, could just call a movie. You could call. You could walk off the set or call a movie, a film break, in order to cut to. The computer is not actually yeah I'll, yeah so we're gonna do a commercial break to get out of this, okay so. we'll call a film break uh, to do this that's the term they use in the game yeah, uh, so spin one d ten fame one d ten fame okay and we're now in a new scene uh, let's see eight all right so you spin eight fame <laughs> um, and now uh, we're no longer in the beach. Uh, we're in, what, a computer lab or something? Uh, yes, one that actually looks like it should be a vast lab, but, you know, feels like it's only about three or five feet wide. Like you know. it's some people green screen in front of a stock photo? Yeah, exactly. It looks like it's there, but it just feels incredibly cheap. Okay. Uh, and who's there? Uh, actually, that would be every, uh, it's like, uh, the person when I wake up. Looking around, uh... Oh, I, so is James Nguyen strapped to, like, a chair with a bunch of wires from his head or something? Uh, no, he actually is, seems to be trapped, uh, like, it doesn't, not trapped, but he seems to be set as in what appears to be a control tower, mm -hmm. or at least a, 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 uh, radar dish that has multiple different soul power, soul panels around it. <laughs> All right, Gary's OG did. Yeah, <laughs> well, he's dragging through. I'm there. Uh, Okay. I'm sitting but quietly, within a, but I'm also voiceovering. Okay. So he's voiceovering right now, and they have somebody who is blindfolded and some for some reason nude and thriving around in satin sheets on his test bed. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, screaming something about a crab. Okay. All I know is that like I'm <clears throat> Tommy Wiseau is in like a recliner mm -hmm. that has been retrofitted with, you know, some essentially ductwork and stuff to make it look like it is somewhat technological. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's wearing, yeah, let's see, a football helmet, or a uh, motorcycle helmet with a blacked out visor and, you know, fig <laughs> wires coming out. And he pulls it off, shakes out his lustrous hair. Yeah. I think we've still got some kinks in there, guys. Yeah. I, I like I was like, I was with the government at the time. It's like their top secret, top secret think tank called the Crustacean Solutions. Guys, it was, it was so secret that not even the president knew about it. Guys, we have to get serious about the kinks. This is humanity's last refuge against the acid vomiting birds. What do you not get? <laughs> like, that was a previous apocalypse we are currently solving. Because only we can, only our group could solve apocalypses. <laughs> this was the third this week. <laughs> This is the third. And also, we only have so many gazebos that we can hide underneath in San Francisco. Like, the gazebo, like, gazebos are company slang for things that could end the world. 
so you're discussing this uh, all uh, when a woman in a business suit comes in and says, well, this is all very important. Well, this is not as important as my, pro- as my problem, which is that my train company uh, needs a new form of steel invented. Uh, so I'm going to talk at length about this to you. A trap door opens up beneath her. Uh, or does it? How? So... <laughs> Um, you're that, gonna have to. You're gonna have to make a roll, or you're gonna have to spend. Uh, actually, yeah, brains on this one. So. Okay, what's the talent? Uh, the last well, like talent. Uh, what was that? Oh, incompetent, ch- incompetent swipe. Incompetent it's, swipe. How is uh, incompetent uh, ch- scenes change? So. Oh, okay. Well, no, no. It has to be a thing your character physically does if it's a talent, uh-huh. or you have to Ooh. spend fame if you want to alter the narrative movie. I've got it. Go okay. for it. Uh, I'm actually going to reach out with Tommy Wiseau's psychic powers. Uh, <laughs> They yes, I did. yes. Um, and reminder that she definitely has cancer. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. What, what, what's your oh. psychic power called? I, you definitely have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> How many points did you put? How many rolls did you? Put? I'm gonna put five. Ooh. <laughs> You know what? Six. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely want people to have cancer. All right. Um. Wow. That's. That's not a lot. That's not great. Uh, I'm glad I used all those dice. Yeah. Um, 10, 20, 26. But obviously that's brains. Yes. Which I don't have a lot of. So rolling <laughs> against 41. Okay. 63. She definitely does not have cancer. Are you kidding? I ha- Because I believe in freedom, I have the best health care money can buy. Because I invent new forms of train steel uh, that is good for trains because trains are important in the future. And there are parasites that you have to be not part of because that is against freedom. And she keeps talking. I'm going to go, I'm going to actually use it to get my uh, Techno Deus Ex. Yeah. She was residue from a previous apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> what was that apocalypse? It was, a, it, was an, it was an apocalypse where a group of greedy businessmen simply allowed the country to be to end satisfied with <laughs> greedy needs. Like, like, no, nope, too real. Like, there's a, she, she like she is psychic. She is psychic residue from that. She appears. <laughs> she appears every morning. So it's, like by this time, we have simply gotten used to her. Okay, go ahead. Within, within, within a few minutes. It's like she will simply fade into fade into the ether, screaming that she, when she realizes that she is not real. Okay. Okay. That's got a little gips in me. Sixty-five. That's a seven. Seven. All right. Uh, that happens. Spin one deep ten points of fame though. Uh, <laughs> as uh, she fights it, she tries to retain control of the three. Head. All right. Um, and uh, yeah, you all because you all remember that 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 time when all the business CEOs went on press conferences at the same time and shot <laughs> themselves in live TV. Uh, that that happened, you know, because they were corrupt and people knew. Uh, Except not actually, it was a simulation <laughs> that uh, they try. Yeah. They drugged us all, yeah, and broadcast a special wave that made it seem as though that were happening. They were actually hiding in uh, (laughs) in a in a canyon concealed by a hole. Except for a few CEOs are like, I like, I admit my dark dealings and shoot themselves. Exactly, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, this is the current the 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 current apocalypse dealing with is the acid. Uh, spitting birds. Uh, oh, acid yeah, spitting explosive birds. Explosive birds. That's part of the, the problem is that they took out every single plane instinctively. We don't really know how it happened. But so is the solution to trick them by putting them in simulation <laughs> with their ancestral enemy, giant crabs? Uh, that was one of the thoughts, but unfortunately the crabs do uh, the crabs revolted in that virtual reality and became just as big a threat, so there's really no escape into there anymore. This okay. was just the last desperate test to see okay. if we could do that. Uh, so as you're talking, um, a, a group of, uh, very beautiful teenagers, uh, walks in, uh, they're very pale and ethereal, uh, and they're wearing, uh, leather clothes. We have to prepare for the, the ritual battle game, uh, and our, uh, that we will defy through our sword teenage romance, um, you know, where we are forced to fight each other for reasons in a, in a maze-like arena of hunger, um, and possibly... Uh, I am a vampire and very clumsy, but adept at all forms of combat. Um, so we need I, this simulation to train and have a training montage. And you are all old, so please get out of the here, so we can be sexy and have uh, romantic triangles. I, I, I look at I look at them, and my voice over again yeah. says, "Like they talk about love. They don't know anything about love. Like I know love. I know I know what kind of drug it can be." So they look, and that skeleton's back. <laughs> All right, spin one, two, ten, three. <laughs> Five. 
All right. Uh, all right, someone else will need to spend four more fame in order to get to uh, cut, have them just be cut out of the film uh, in a glaring <laughs> continuity error. Um, oh, I, I, well, yeah. I was just going to throw the football to them. And oh, yeah, please them. Yeah, yeah, but I'll spend uh, four uh, fame to distract them. With okay, you could, either one would work. <clears throat> so, yeah. Guys, once you throw it all around? Uh, yeah, it, so you start throwing at them, and then we cut to uh, what what in a what would be a glaring continuity error uh, in a lesser film, but oh, yeah, like yeah. glaring continuity. Yeah, <laughs> so we're just not going to see how that resolves. All right, yeah. Since that is going through, uh, we actually uh, re- uh, find ourselves suddenly in oh a nicely appoint uh, it's like a very nicely appointed Mexican restaurant. Mm. So it is. Just a complete smash cut to that immediately uh, there, uh, where Tommy is still playing football in the back. Uh, no, kitchen. I'm now a mariachi musician. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not um, You actually see the same woman that I was talking to, except that she has, uh, except like, red hair and is wearing tank tops now. Is she the Marcy? Yes, this is Marcy. The, so, the Marcy. The Marcy. Okay. Uh, so, which I thought she was the Jill before, but this is actually that was a digital representation because oh. I was trying to get over the Jill. So I created. I found out that apparently the system created the Marcy. Is that really what's happening, Neil Brain? I don't know. I'm currently eating nachos off of one of my laptops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you three fame for that. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling the waveboard's about to collapse on this world piece. Oh no, we haven't got to the real thing yet. Uh, uh, why not? Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> as, you're, as you're all there in the restaurant eating nachos or having a romantic uh, uh, dinner conversation. Well, see, it's not really so much conversation yeah, as trumpet. just, you like this? I like this. Why do you like this? Why do you look there? I'm not her. I'll change my looks for her. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's like that. Uh, we have some long gazing shots of the murals painted on the restaurant walls. Uh, the government said these people should not be allowed here, but look at them. Look at their culture. They belong here. <laughs> uh, at this point, um, two burly men in uh, armored suits uh, crash through the window and start fighting. Um, it's very uh, dark. Uh, some would say even grim, uh, as they are they are resolutely fighting each other and uh, swearing at each other. <laughs> uh, 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 I gotta stop you. Uh. Uh, in the background, there are the teenagers uh, from the the Hunger Battle uh, Maze game, uh, Twilight of the Diver. Future. Uh, yeah, that we that we edited out, but they're actually back in the background and they're looking very alarmed. But we'll go back to the two guys fighting. Uh, it's very important. We should really focus on their inner pain because you know uh, maybe someone in their lives died and that makes them angry. Uh, so uh, well, they came from everybody died. Everybody's uh, always dying. Oh no, it's about them now. So uh, it's you're you're, you're just, over again. Yeah. Like, all they knew was conflict. All they knew was war. It's a feeling I understood all too well. <laughs> all right. Uh, you'll have to spend five fame points if you want to have that monologue. As it's really about them because he starts a monologue. Yeah, actually, no, no, but you see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, but see, my, my, my uh, voiceover is also not quite... Is you know the sound isn't quite equalized, so it's really hard to hear over the sound of fighting. <laughs> okay, so they can't really hear it. But another monologue comes on. This one is from one of the grim men, who's like, "I'm fighting against the darkness of crime and evil, and these people have got to fight them. Oh, my pain and suffering is so intense." And he's just going on and on and on and on and on about how he, he's really ugh, angsty and grim. You know, crying. maybe yeah. instead we should have a party. <laughs> All right, are we uh, gonna have it? Uh, yes, I move my tie up to my forehead. Head and no. start pouring everyone scotch. Scotch. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, that's going to cost nine fame uh, to fight against. Okay, that. I'll All do right. it. All right, so suddenly everyone's drinking scotchka. Uh, the two burly men. Uh, and yeah, there's good music. There's uh, actually no. The music turns into some overused pop hit that's been in a billion. Years. Good music. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even really appropriate. It's like they they added a bunch of music to make the movie less grim dark. Best last music. Uh, but it's <laughs> you know they were still fighting, but it looked like they were fucking. And there's three more of these vigilant masked vigilante types there now. Is this a like, kids' pop like, album? Yeah. Uh, like my voiceover again now yeah. comes in slightly more audible. Like they were still fighting, only now it looked like they were fucking each other's belly buttons. Yes, uh, 
<laughs> uh, they were fighting. Yeah, they're fighting. They're drinking scotch at the same time. It's really hard to kind of tell what's going on. Uh, and, the, and James Dewan thinks that one of those, one of the gruff voices sounds very familiar. Mm-hmm. Just through the, the horrible vocoder that he can't really understand. And, and going swear, in, <coughs> swear an oath to me. Yeah. yeah. And just goes over and realizes as he takes off. He smells a perfume that he hasn't seen in a while, too. And as one of them gets drunker, the helmet just unlatches since they're trying to get air falls yeah. off. And it's the Joe! It's the Joe! It's He's there! The oh, it's been 1D10 fame. <laughs> oh, God. All righty. Uh, four. All right. Uh, she's there. She looks at you. It's like, you can't fight. You have to find the... You have to go through the, the the hero's journey in order to stop this. But Otherwise, you can't be here because the Marcy's here. <laughs> the Marcy's. Uh, it's not that. You have to find the plot device. And then you have to rescue the love interest. And then you have to defeat the villain. Otherwise, the grim darkness and bad movie making. I mean, uh, overused cynical uh, super. Uh, well, whatever it is. It's really bad and it should stop. Uh, but yeah, find the plot device first. The Marcy? Uh, no, this is the Jill. Uh, <laughs> she was apparently one of the burly men all along uh, only she was not as you know uh, oh, I looked her, suddenly her armor becomes very tight and you, appealing you know, I looked to her like something and like her scene is briefly taken over yeah. by the skeleton like it couldn't be her I knew what happened to her <laughs> how did she how, how oh, did she no. When uh, when Neil Breen yeah. says you know addresses the one the the Jill thinking that it's the Marcy mm-hmm. and says the Marcy the other burly man that's wrestling with him yeah. pauses Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My mom's name was Marcy. Okay. God damn um, it. You don't get any fame. You don't have to spend any fame. But yeah, the, <laughs> the fighting stops. Uh, at least for now. Uh, but all three of you realize the grim dark is coming and will consume all everything Dead. unless you first find the uh, plot device. Uh, do you w- know what the plot device is? Soul power. Soul power. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, I already gave you points for soul power. So yeah, you have to find the soul power. Uh, so soul, the soul power. Soul power. Soul power. Soul power. No, I got it. Like, actually, I hold up. But look, it's actually like a, it's like a direct TV satellite. <laughs> 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 and I you know, and I open up the laptop that has the nachos on it. All right, roll taste de- de- techno Deus Ex Machina or de- okay. Deus Ex. Nine, nine. Okay. Uh, As it, do it, it says like it says like it, like that. It, it hit me then. The salt pot is what we needed. It's like it's a good thing that this energy signature, as it emits, can only be detected by technology I have procreated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, is the is it that really the uh, 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 is that really the plot device or is that just a fake? Sure. Okay, uh, but then you have to rescue the love interest. Um, who is the is is the Marcy the love interest or is she the one holding the real love interest? Uh, it's Mark. It's Mark. Oh. Is it Mark? Is the, the love interest? Mark ran away with the Marcy. Oh, no, Mark ran ran away with the love interest. Okay, uh, so you have to find Mark. Um, do you know where he is? Uh, well, as you look around, you said, well, well, no, that's not what's important. Oh. Uh, if we're going to rescue the love interest, we're going to have to take revenge on Mark, which means we're going to need a gun. Oh, so you need a gun to rescue yes, the love interest. Yes, but not just any gun. Mm-hmm. It needs to be a drug dealer's gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, you're all in a wear- on the roof of a warehouse. <laughs> uh, looking down, you know, looking on the, uh, uh, there's a skylight right in front of you. Below there, you see a drug deal going on. Uh, they have drugs. Uh, all of them? Uh, <laughs> all of the drugs. All of the drugs. And one of them, one of the bad people who is wearing a business suit, uh, but he also has like a monocle and, you know, the business suit is kind of torn in a punk way. So he looks kind of cool and fashionable. Uh, he says, yes, we will no, give... No, a white suit. Oh, yeah, a white suit, yeah. yeah. Um, he says, we will give the drugs... To children, and then they will be hooked forever, and thus the darkness will come. And the other is like, yes, that is what we will do. Um, I want to uh, parachute in mm-hmm. and then make the drug dealer a better deal because uh, I have a talent. Yeah. Successful banker. Ooh. Oh, nice. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll that. Um, have you assigned points to that yet? No, I'm going to. Let's see. Fifteen left. I uh, go bigger. Go home. I'll go five. <laughs> I 
Okay, so that's 32. Um, I'm also going to say that that is a looks check. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> because I work in money and all the finance people, it's not brain space. Yeah, that, all right, yeah. that is very good. Uh, so go ahead and roll that. Okay, uh, that will put me uh, versus 64. Mm-hmm. Uh, 28. 28, nice. I'll right. offer him more money for all the drugs. You and his gun. And his gun? Um, that is true. But you look, your money is gone. What happened to it? James Newton, what happened to his money? Uh, unfortunately, I had to sell, I, I used it all while I was acquiring a massive amount of chips for my new company. It was one million dollars. One million dollars, <laughs> yes. It was exactly, okay. So... Uh, so they look at you, you don't have the money? Uh, so, uh... uh well, that's yeah. the thing, is that they made... So why did you need to get those chips? Well, I needed to make the chips because if we generate... If we can actually channel enough soul power, then that will eventually kill off the birds. But oh, this is actually... Okay. This was not actually a drug acquisition. This was actually a test bed because all of the new birds are instinctively drawn to cocaine. Okay, which is a drug. Yes. Uh, so is that going? Is that thing that you just described going to work? Make some kind of talent test uh, or spend fame. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a brains look. Which okay. is uh, well, no, you have to. What's it? The talent. The, uh, yeah, I'm going with the talent. Uh, in theory. <laughs> in theory. Okay. Uh, yeah, another unbig uh, question mark. Yeah. All right. In theory, Birdemic is a movie. Yeah. So that qualifies. <laughs> and yeah, that's going to be five. Oh, well. wait, suddenly. Uh, but you can't do that right now because you have to drive there. Uh, and so oh, wrong. Are we in the and park. And park. So make a parking check first. Okay. Dex check, park. So. <sighs> so, and. Oh, I just roll. Oh, sorry. Add your no, you're just roll. I'm just rolling it. Did you already have parking uh, at a? You already have parking. Oh yeah, that's like at uh, that was at forty eight. So, All right, yeah. so yeah, so Sorry. roll forty eight or less on your. All right, let's see. Come on, dice don't random dice don't fail me now. Uh yeah, thirty six car is parked. All right, so you park the car. You're getting there. Uh, the plan is almost working, but Neil Breen, uh, he's gonna get shot before he can enact the plan and get the birds to eat the. The cocaine or whatever. It's a good thing that I'm actually I am like I am, I am also a, from time to time an alien that punishes the wicked. On the <laughs> I make as a, I make them see all the wicked things they have done, and make it go back to them a thousandfold. Okay. Uh, all right. Roll. Uh, avenging like it's like avenging guy. Avenging guy. Okay. <laughs> we'll put four in that one. Forty ten. Yeah. All right. Which is... 20. 20, so uh, what attribute are you associated with it? Uh, build. Build, okay, yeah. Alright, here we go. That is a 47. No. Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, everyone is so grim dark that even the heroes have... Uh, you, you, you use it on one of the burly men vigilantes... Uh, who had to work out six months on a lean uh, chicken diet, you know, and they talk about it, all the publicity stuff. And he looks great, but, like, you know, it's a movie, not a workout video, so who gives a shit? Uh, but anyway, he uh, is really Shots tortured. Fired. <laughs> he is really <laughs> tortured about it. Like, it was impressive back in 300, but, like, all right. Yeah, it's anybody like can do it now. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, you're, you, he's just really tortured because he was a really – he did really bad things and he hurt people, but he means good and he's tortured. Have I mentioned how tortured he is uh, as a vigilante? And he just used a special uh, vigilante card to crush some guys. Um, so anyway, uh, you're back there. Um, you can just spend one DT in fame and resolve this. Uh, <laughs> It turns out the money was in my other briefcase. Uh, it was. <laughs> oh, hi, briefcase. Uh, uh, actually, one of the sexy teens uh, gets it from the Randy and Steel uh, <laughs> uh, business tycoon train owner uh, and hands it to you. Uh, and then there's an animated bee uh, there for some reason. Uh, but we'll just ignore that. Um, so <laughs> okay, that went wait, straight wait. over our heads if that was Is a this reference. this B movie, but every time they say B, we start playing It Came From the Late 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 Show? Uh, I will not either, uh, I will not confirm or deny. God oh, damn it. So, oh, damn. Um, so you get, you, you get the, the, the you, you save all, all the, the children from the drugs. 
uh, which is good. And, uh, and you have a drug dealer's, you have a drug dealer's gun, <laughs> which you can now use on Mark. Uh, so where is Mark? Oh, uh, let's see. Actually, you no. Know, uh, Mark is at is at the vaunted. Uh, oh, he's at the veranda. The veranda. He's actually at the veranda waiting for. All right, it's really bright. Uh, like as in though they don't understand white balance and lighting the scene. Uh, and so <laughs> filmmaking he, joke. Yeah, and so it's really bright out there. You can barely see his face. You can barely see the Marcy's face. In fact, it's literally her head is just blown out. It's just you know. Uh, Pure white. I don't really remember what she looked like. Yeah, exactly. So she's there. Who's actually going to shoot the mark for the Marcy? I am, because I am a suit government super agent. Okay. Do you have that talent? I do now. <laughs> that's, that's five. Have you kept track of how many? Uh, oh, he yeah. has. Okay. I'm watching Tom <laughs> Church do game bookkeeping. What a brave world we live in. <laughs> I I never doubted you, Tom. <laughs> I never doubted me either. <laughs> That's good. 10, 17, 23, 28. 28? Uh, you can add dexterity. Yeah, I'll be dex. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if you can shoot him. Shoot the... Mark. I do, 27. All right, so please describe the shooting of the Mark to save the Marcy. I, On the veranda of the vanilla. I... I, I I just fire forward, like, <laughs> like I fire like I fire the gun way more times than I have bullets. The gun, the gun doesn't really sound like this kind of gun should. Uh, someone can get one d ten fame by role playing Mark's death. Uh, uh, he shot me with bullets from the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Uh, shot me with weapon. Weapon. <laughs> hey, <get four> back. <laughs> All right, so you've rescued the Marcy. Oh, what price? Um, what price? Yeah, uh, so all that's left is defeating the villain, but who's the villain? Uh, uh, who, who's really behind all these apocalypses? And uh, Zack Schneider. Zack Schneider. Schneider. I don't know who that is. So I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yes. Uh, well, actually, since John Galt, essentially since we're the, the it's woman. Zach Galt. Uh, <laughs> Zach Galt. I said Schneider. Uh, Schneider. No, I like Zach Galt. Yeah. Zach Galt. Uh, Zach Galt. Um, so he is the villain. Um, where where is he? Uh, uh, let's. Where's this next scene? Next scene. Uh, it probably looks like a stock photo that some people have been reading. Las Vegas. Screen. He's on a special train, Zach Zephyr. Oh, woo! <laughs> all right, he's you're on the special train. Um, all of you somehow, and he is there. He's wearing very burly armor. Um, he has goggles on, and he has stubble. That means he's very dangerous. Uh, and he's just like, Ugh! in well choreographed high kicking. Uh, he's kicking all three of you in the face. And I'm going to guess he's also a little, a little uh, overclocked, speed-wise. Uh, uh, a little bit. A little uh, or use well, actually maybe not necessarily, but you can you can't see his face every time he kicks. It's like yeah. you know, uh, uh, but all of you take ten survival point damage uh, um, as you get kicked and in an expertly choreographed uh, ass whooping. Or not? I mean that that seems to be what happened. But again, you can uh, add the movie if you want. All right. So I will go down, but I'm in hopes of stalling him because, uh, as we know, James Wynn and all of his char- his primary characters, they are blandly attractive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, are you trying to seduce him? Uh, not seduce him, but just kind of look at him going, I can't, it's like, I should kill you, but you know what? You're kind of oh, too, oh, okay. yeah. too pretty to hit. All right, so. James Wynn is too pretty to die. Yeah. Um, what, what's that talent called? Too pretty to die? Uh, no, that's blandly attractive. Blandly so. attractive, okay, yeah. All right. I like it. Attractive. All right, let's see. That's going to be over. Oh, I'll get my fifth one in there, because that's going to be over five again. So It looks like your my brother's last, also That's my last Marcy. skill, so. Marcy. 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 Yeah, I'm Marcy. You know Marcy? The Marcy. I've known the Marcy all my life. I can't, I've seen her in my dreams. I can't kill you. I'm going to instead torture one of my henchmen. <laughs> to supplement my urges through violence. Actually, I'm, oh, I'm going to let roll. First. Yeah, no worries. So let's see. Oh, crap. So 10, 20, 8. So, 20, and I'm going to say that's going to yeah. go on top of my looks. Of course. So five. Uh, that's going to be 61. All right. 
So, have a better shot at that at least. Yeah. And yeah, 22. All so. right, he cannot fight you. So, he, like I said, he supplements his urges to by uh, basically breaking, he, you know, he takes one of his henchmen and breaks his leg and throws him out the train. Uh, it's very gory and very cool looking, but yeah. Uh, so he's yeah. wearing super bulky armor, right? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Like the helmet, like the eye slot is really just more. I mean, it's very much just a slot, and his like eyes are, you know, as though uh, they no, have, they're, like, they're LED the flashlights. He's behind. wearing goggles. It's kind of post apocalyptic. Oh, oh, okay. Kind yeah, of fury roadish. Uh, you know? I'm gonna still I, help. Yeah. Oh, it's like, like this, like, like doing all the dirty work for the government. It's put me in contact with people. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I remember. I remembered a good friend of mine. This, he was a cop the, who taught who taught me that katana means Japanese sword. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, all right. Lester's at home. Aaron just died. Uh, I'll give you one D10 fame. Um, Three. Three. Okay. Uh, Samurai cop beer starts fighting him. Uh, he's clearly his luster's hair is clearly not a woman's wig. Uh, so that you, you, he's bought you some time. Uh, but more henchmen are appearing. Uh, well, and there's a big, big glowy reactor thing you could cause to blow up and defeat him without having. Actually, to. yeah. So we're on Zach Zephyr, which mm-hmm. is a high speed train. Yeah. And uh, since he just threw one of his, you know, the broken body of his henchman off of there, the door must be open. Mm-hmm. Now he's engaged in a fencing duel or in a, you know, mm-hmm. a jitsu duel. A Japanese um, sword duel. <laughs> yeah. It would be a real <laughs> shame if he accidentally, you know. Because it's hard to get full proprioception in big bulky armor like that if he stepped on a football and fell out of the train. Oh, yeah, you can roll football. <laughs> uh, four out of 54. Oh, yeah. Uh, he trips on that and, and a bunch of spoons that are on the ground for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he starts falling out. So he's hanging by his... Uh, he grabs Samurai Cop by the hair and and because it's not a wig, uh, yanks him off. And so Samurai Cop goes tumbling out uh, for a fake out, you know, possible death. But, you know, he'll, 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 his partner will pick him he up. He will return. Yeah. He will return. <laughs> uh, but he's not there to help anymore. So he's hanging so by his fingernails. Like, I was like... Uh, oh no no I got I take my the laptop yeah and I have it just like it's like incomplete pass <laughs> throw the laptop okay you do it <laughs> you do the thing uh, you don't have to roll you don't get any fame points because you spent them to do the thing but yeah you, you do the thing you defeated the villain um, so there there is a uh, f- uh, there's a, an amazing special effect to show that you're on the, on the final path uh, well there would be except instead it's just you know a d- square of dotted lines that says insert amazing special effect here <laughs> Or that. That could yeah. be the thing that happened. Um, and the train slows down um, as the Marcy appears. She's wearing uh, a white dress. Uh, she's glowing a little bit. She has uh, angel wings that are flapping in the exact same pattern over and over again. <laughs> um, yeah. The skeleton is with her. Uh, she's clearly not holding the skeleton up. Uh, it's... And an old bearded man who's holding out a square rock. Oh, yeah. And they say, uh, you have completed your quest. Now you must go and see... Uh, the you must go and form the new world. Uh, go there in the pyramid, the sanctuary. Uh, and Did you say sanctuary. Yes, because uh, <laughs> you, yeah, you have to. There's no retakes. Uh, <laughs> the retakes are for no, no, no sanctuaries. Um, so you look in the distance and you see there is a pyramid. Uh, it appears to be made out of uh, small tapes. Uh, <laughs> I get fate points for that. Uh, oh, fuck you! I get nine fate points for that. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> Rude. All right, James Moonian <laughs> has been edited out of this movie. Uh, roll 1d10 if you want to show up for any uh, more scenes. Um, okay. All right, do you have fate points to burn? Yes, I do. Or, I'm sorry, uh, fate, fate points. Yeah. All right, so uh, you get inside the pyramid made out of Jerry Maguire VHS tapes. Uh, <laughs> and there is a man in red robes uh, that is stylized like a Jerry Maguire uh, tape. Uh, he says, we have one artifact from a better universe, a more finely crafted universe, an actual good universe, <laughs> a universe made by a skilled god, by a skilled storyteller. I pres- and then on the throne... I present to you the briefcase 
The briefcase is from a film. Is is said to? Uh, Why well, I dare not speak the film from which it. Uh, the universe. I'm sorry, not in film. That that would. Not, uh, uh, can we take this? No. Um, uh, <laughs> it's from another universe, and no one knows what's in there. But when you open it, it glows. Um, and so it is said, whoever looks in it will see, will create it, their own universe, uh, limited only by their own imagination. Um, My brothers. We should look together. Like you can look separately, or you could look together. I, 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 the voiceover, like says, the strange man suggested that we all look in together. I thought that was an excellent idea, <laughs> and Brian embraced it thoroughly. Okay. And I smash a laptop in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he says yes. <laughs> Guys, that might have two million dollars worth of sales in it. Ooh. No, it, such a number exists. <laughs> two million. <laughs> it's like one million and another million. <laughs> there are not, not that, that many cross, anything. Yeah. That's practically two McDucks worth. Yeah, that well, again, there's one and then there's another one. <laughs> um, so you open the briefcase, which is uh, maybe possibly the one from Pulp Fiction, but you know. Uh, so and that's how Tom, who was so Neil Breen and James Wynn joined the choir invisible. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does? How many fame points do you have right now? Uh, Thirty-six. Thirty-six. What about you? Uh, ten. Ten. What about you? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Obviously, uh, it's based on how many fame points you have. Uh, so, what what does this new universe look like? That is shaped by your cinema. An establishing shot of San Francisco. Oh yeah, clearly, yeah, Golden Gate Bridge. A uh, long, long thirty-minute driving scenes. <laughs> okay, over the Golden Gate. Over Bridge. the Golden, Golden Gate, Gate Bridge. Bridge. I'm in Golden Gate Park on a picnic table with twenty-four laptops. Everywhere you go, it's <laughs> created a purer, more noble universe. Where everyone is kind and learns life lessons. That this is the true origin story of Full House. So. And Full oh, House, yeah. 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 And, I, and I looked at the twins. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, meanwhile, back in the base Warriors universe, uh, the movie has been going on for much longer than what we've been doing, or because there's a lot of padding that we kind of skipped over. Uh, so the three of you, uh, what are your reactions to it? Uh, or but you realize I can't get drunk anymore. Uh, oh yeah, not even, have you tried that Merlin's blood? It's made from the wizard's blood. Uh, the uh, there's like, a oh, it'll, it'll get anyone. It'll get anyone drunk. Yeah, it's magical. Street. Have you tried that? You know, it doesn't look like you have. I have some. See, I would, but the last time anything magic crossed these, I was still hearing Avalon will save me for the better part of a month. See that'll see that'll get you messed up. <laughs> well, I think the narrative structure was. Um... Mm, interesting. <laughs> I mean, the last movie I saw was in 1934. Uh, God. Birth of a Nation? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that was a classic. Oh. oh. oh Kurzik, stop being problematic. <laughs> uh, oh. So, Jeff? Uh, by, by the way, I've never seen a man be more cruel to his equipment before. <laughs> 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 Don't go looking for porn. <laughs> like, um, like, I cannot believe how easy it is to find in your world. Oh yeah. I think if I cut that up and like put some Macintosh uh, 220 under it, it'll probably get me <laughs> lots of hits on YouTube. Yes, uh, and so the Vaporwave remix Anders becomes a uh, gets a billion hits on YouTube because fuck you, it's my universe. So uh, I think it's good that Caleb wasn't here tonight. He would have shriveled <laughs> up and died. <laughs> he would have just walked. He would have just turned around and walked exactly. out. Exactly. There's no uh, way he was doing It would have been like rubber. Uh, yep. uh, that, so that was the uh, Marcy's veranda of infinite light. Uh, a co breed the the Marcy's the, the Marcy's the Marcy's veranda in the light the uh, was so Breen Nguyen production <laughs> uh, hopefully one of many uh, there's already talks of a sequel um, they'll have hopefully to get hopefully one of none <laughs> uh, they're talking about getting the Tom one Chasers one. guy in there uh, oh and we'll WBN yeah WBN for yeah yeah. Uh, and Radical Jacket. Warbot, I'm taking away your TV privileges. Uh, uh, you can't. I'm yeah. a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, thanks for listening. Happy Proverse Bye. Bye. Bye.